Hi, and on this episode of What's Going On in Shayna's Comment Section, we're diving into mitochondrial DNA. Thank you so much for this comment. I keep forgetting that my brain is full of so much random information that sometimes it deserves a pause and a deep dive. So let's read this comment and then let's dive in a little bit more. So um, this comment was left on a video that I made talking about my list of uh, pregnancy non-negotiables as somebody that is proactively child free. Um, as many of the people in that comment section realized, it's a list of pregnancy non-negotiables that are broad and wide and far reaching because I don't want children. Right. So with that, um, one of the things that I mentioned was mitochondrial DNA. And this commenter pointed that out. Um, I actually like they don't have a comment underneath it, but like, whatever, let's, let's dive this. Let's dive in. Um, reading about the mitochondrial DNA you mentioned, along with human biology in general, really makes me angry at patriarchy society. Right? Um, cool list and fun facts, though. Taking that list as someone with a uterus, you are more than welcome to take that list and run with it. And now let's dive into what is mitochondrial DNA and why it makes the patriarchy absolutely unnatural, clinically insane, and proves that women are actually, we should be taking our mother's last name. It's insane that we take our father's last name. So this is a study, it says mitochondria at, at the top. I keep forgetting how things cut off here. Mitochondria, a story of mothers, teenagers, and energy. This is from McGill um, University. And we're going to be focusing on a specific paragraph in here, but here's the subheader. Um, our cells are full of mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> the way in which their DNA behaves is nothing short of an act of rebellion against the patriarchy. Jump scare. Okay, it's the next day. My period is raging. I took off all. I had took a nap that turned into a full blown sleep. But I woke up during this very rainy day, so that way we can continue to talk about science. If I hear anything about my appearance right now, well, I am struggling. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might just cry. Anyway, let's get into the science about why women are better. So um, this section of this paper is called the mother of, a gen of all genomes. Um, let's start. You may remember that you inherit half of your DNA from your mother and the other half from your father. That this DNA forms 23 pairs of stick-like chromosomes and that this DNA is copied according to a very strict cell, cell cycle. All of these facts are true but they apply to nuclear DNA, meaning the DNA inside of the nucleus of a cell or the yolk of an egg, in analogy. Outside the nucleus in the hundreds, sometimes thousands of mitochondria a single cell contains, there is yet more DNA to be found, the mitochondrial genome mitochondrial DNA also. Um, like a teenager defying its parent, mitochondrial DNA stands in opposition to nuclear DNA. It is copied con constantly, independently of the carefully choreographed cell cycle. It does not form stick-like chromosomes, but a single circular chromosome, a ring of DNA. And importantly, it is passed down uniquely from the mother of her children, regardless of their sex, the powerhouse of the cell. Moving on. Um, this last fact, the called maternal inheritance, has been controversial in the, in the recent past. In 2018, a team of researchers claimed to have found evidence in three unrelated families of biparental inheritance, meaning that some of the mitochondrial DNA in children came from their father as well. To rule out contamination or sample mix-up, the researchers had the test repeated by multiple laboratories using fresh blood samples. Paternal inheritance of mitochondrial DNA has been reported in the fruit fly, mouse, and sheep. And 20 years ago, there was a published report of one man whose muscles seemingly contained mitochondrial DNA from his dad. But this 2018 paper was a real shocker. Its authors da even dared to write that their results ran counter to the central dogma of mitochondrial inheritance. And it sounds like a slap in the face. Sounds like people were trying to cause a fight in the nerd community. Anyway, let's continue. Last year, however, a better explanation was proposed. Whenever this rare phenomenon phenomenon is seen, the mitochondrial DNA is inherited in a way that recalls how a father and a mother's nuclear DNA make one's 
makes its way into their children. It would appear that mitochondrial DNA detected in, the, in those cases of biparental inheritance does not come from mito the mitochondria themselves. Rather, they are bits of mitochondrial DNA that have made their way inside the nucleus of the cell and integrated themselves into the chromosome chromosomes. They are thus passengers. They end up being inherited alongside the rest of the mother's and father's nuclear chromosomes. A review article of this phenomenon points out an important lesson. The existence of these passengers does not challenge the dogma of how the mitochondrial genome is inherited from from one generation to the next. Rather, a, my par a more parsimonious explanation exists. Parsimonious, I literally just looked this up, don't worry. It means stingy frugal, um, close-fisted, that kind of stuff. Um, the DNA inside mitochondria in, in humans is indeed passed from mother to her children, but sometimes bits of the mitochondrial DNA end up inside the nuclear genome of the father and are inherited by the children. The dogma of maternal inheritance is still valid. Puzzling findings don't always usher in a new scientific revolution after all. Why is this important? Now we're getting into it. This ring of DNA we inherit from our mothers is quite tough and it comes in handy in the field of human identification. Nuclear DNA is easily destroyed after death. Enzymes grab a hold of the end of its string of DNA and chew it up like Pac-Man. Humidity and ultraviolet light will all also play havoc um, on the nuclear DNA of dead bodies. Mitochondrial DNA, however, is more resilient. Its circular shape discourages enzymes that need a clean end to start feasting. And the presence of hundreds of mitochondria in each cell, with each mitochondrion containing two to 10 copies of its DNA, means there's plenty of mitochondrial DNA to ensure its survival. This is why the identification of very old bodies exposed to the elements can be impossible with nuclear DNA, but not with mitochondrial DNA. In humans, the mitochondrial genome contains 37 genes and a stretch called the hypervariable region, which has enough variation as to constitute a fingerprint. When compared to the same region in a maternal relative, a body can thus be identified. Why does this matter? When you take this research, when you take these facts, these scientific studies, and what is this? And you put it up against the nonsense that is men trying to claim a legacy. It was never their legacy. It was always their mother's. It was never their father's legacy. It was their father's mother. But it's never the man's legacy. It is always with the mother. This makes the fact that the majority of us have our father's last name more adorable, more comical than anything, because when, it, when our bodies are decaying, when we are nothing but spirit in atmosphere and bone in ground, the only thing that actually connects us scientifically is our mother. And what I am curious about, what I am really, really fascinated by is if you take this study, right? And for the people that have been following me, you've seen the video that I've made about um, the study that leads the success of a child to maternal happiness. It is not based on the father's presence. The success of a child is always based on the happiness of the mother. There's science behind it. Go find that video. It's somewhere. Um, I'll try my best to link it. Once again, who, anyway, um, you take these two things, right? The fact that mothers are our legacy, the mitochondrial DNA is our legacy. And then you link that to the fact of maternal happiness being our greatest indicator for success in life. And then under the umbrella of, because DNA can change over time, right? PTSD affects DNA. It's how we have generational trauma. Um, it affects all people that have gone through mass trauma, including white people. Yes, black people were enslaved, but something had to click up here. Something had to snap up here in a massive way for y'all ancestors to have done what y'all are doing, did, and for certain things to perpetuate. So y'all, you're not excused from this conversation, right? So these kinds of things affect the way that our brains work and they also change elements within our DNA. 
So you have that massive umbrella and then you have the mother's happiness, like general satisfaction in life. And then you have the legacy of that. You can actually trace. There's got to be a way to trace the ancestral happiness of our mother's 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 mother. I need to be a scientist is what we're putting together. So I'm going to go down a bottle of Advil. Um, but if you have any thoughts, questions, I'm not going to say concerns, but theories along these lines, because my mind is reeling right now, um, much like the porcupine within my uterus. So I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts. Typically type them away in the comment section. Um, I will get to them as soon as I can, as soon as I am well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. Also, once again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.